OK, so my talk is titled SJ Tools, Tools for Image Processing, Normalizing, and Scoring Synthetic Genetic Arrays. Um, I'm going to start out with describing what an SJ screen is, uh, steps in processing SJ screens, a uh, brief outline of the software or web application that we developed, a uh, small demo of the software, uh, conclusion and a wrap up. This isn't really a long talk. It's about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to start out with defining what SJ is. Just a show of hands, how many people here don't know what a synthetic genetic array is? OK. Maybe like a quarter. Yeah. Um, so synthetic genetic array typically looks something like this. Uh, it's a screen such that uh, each, col like each colony is a group of cells, typically in yeast, which uh, you have uh, two genes knocked out, so a double mutant instead of a single mutant. And what you're trying to look for is you're trying to look for a deviation in uh, the colony size from what you expect if you had knocked out these two genes independently. And uh, once you see this deviation is from what you would expect, you'd call it what people call a genetic interaction. And so typically you get back a screen like this, uh, but I'll just get back a screen like this. And uh, they have the trouble of processing these images. They have these images and they don't know what to do with them. And so there's really three key steps in processing these images. Um, the first one is image analysis. So after you get these images, uh, how do you go from something like that to a data file where you have row, column, and like the size of each colony? Uh, second step is once you've processed these images, once you have that data file, uh, you have multiple effects uh, based on uh, multiple experimental effects that you can see on the screen, such as uh, plate effects. So once you image process these files, uh, depending on the resolution of the file or depending on the size of the file, you get different colony sizes. Uh, you get nutrition-based effects, like spatial or gradient effects, where like you might have a screen on like a on a tilt or something, so you get like a, a, a gradient in nutrients, and so some colonies are growing bigger than others. You have this row column effect where the colonies, uh, which one's the laser pointer? Uh, the, the front one. Okay. Uh, where the colonies on the border are growing more because they have more access to nutrients, so there's, no, there's not that much competition. And then you also have this competition effect where if you have small colonies here, you have larger colonies around it because, again, they have more access to nutrition uh, as compared to the ones in the middle. Uh, the third step is really once you have uh, these double mutants, uh, what we call them, and uh, single mutant screens, you want to really compare and contrast both these screens to be able to identify what we call genetic interactions. So these are like really to the three main steps in processing these screens. Um, so that was really our main motivation, was going from these images to getting scores uh, and making it really as simple as possible. Uh, so the previously developed SJ pipeline uh, that really accomplished this previously was done by Anastasia from Boone Lab. Uh, she really laid the, the backbone for processing these images and uh, obtaining these scores. Uh, but the code that she wrote, uh, the software that she wrote, was uh, Firstly, the image analysis wasn't really open source, so it wasn't really accessible to everyone uh, in the community. Uh, normalization and scoring uh, that was used was written in MATLAB, which is commercial, so it's not really, uh, again, not open source, so people can't modify it, people can't use it as they wish if they don't have access to MATLAB. Uh, it was really designed for large-scale studies, so for more genome-wide stuff as compared to just one screen or if you have one or two screens. And uh, most importantly, it wasn't accessible to biologists. So biologists, if you didn't know how to handle code, you really had no, no way of interacting with um, this kind of stuff. This is where we came in. Um, this is where we developed kind of like a pipeline which facilitates this. Uh, so SJ Tools really unifies image analysis, normalization, and scoring of these screens. Uh, it's made specifically for small scale experiments. So if you just have one or two screens, or uh, a small number of screens. And it's really, uh, really easy to use through this web application that we made. Um, the web app was developed using Twitter Bootstrap, which is a front-end framework. Um, the back-end was developed uh, using 
Play framework. So that's a web application framework, uh, which typically combines Java and Scala. Uh, I'll talk about that later on. Uh, and the normalization and scoring was written in R. And we had some pretty cool visualization stuff that was done using uh, this library called data-driven documents. So I'm going to get straight to it and show you a brief demo of the software. All right. So I'm going to start out with just a simple, uh, basic two screens. Uh, wild type and the control, so basically the double mutant and the single, single mutant. Uh, I'm going to navigate to the web application. This is what we have here. Um, again, there's image analysis, normalization, and scoring that you can do. Uh, so we're going to get started straight away. First page is image analysis, so you can go ahead and select those two images that I just showed you. Once you select these images, they're loaded up here. Um, you can select different formats for the plates that you have. The plate formats that I'm using here is 1536 colonies. Uh, you can select different ones, 96, 384, 768. Uh, but we're just going to go with 1536. That's what we have here. Process the images. So it takes roughly about five to six seconds to process each image, uh, relatively fast plus the upload time for each image, because these images are typically large, about 4 megs, 5 megs. Uh, so once these images are processed, uh, you can download your results. You can visually inspect uh, the image analysis that's been done on your images. So we're just going to go ahead and download the results, take a look at what it looks like. So you see, uh, take a look at the Excel file that was spit out. Uh, it's pretty small, but you can see here's row, column, colony size, and this last thing is circularity. So really simple to use. You got image size, uh, colony sizes straight out. Uh, you can also inspect the gridding that was done on your plate, so where the circles were placed around in case some sort of error happened or something. Um, so you can kind of zoom into that and take a look. So what the image analysis software does is it quantifies the colony size by looking at the pixel intensities of uh, your colonies. Uh, from there, you can kind of pick which ones you want to normalize and score from this point on. Uh, but I'm just going to leave both of them as checked. So we're going to go back up, and we're going to click Normalize the Score, which will take us to the normalization page and the scoring page. On this page, you see the images are preloaded from image analysis. You don't have to really re-upload anything. Um, you can define this array layout Pay, uh, array layouts, if you're familiar with the technology, um, these are really just supplementary data that you need uh, to use with your plate. So this is basically like a map from row and column to which ORF that you're using. So example, like row one, column one is a specific ORF. And it just uses that to, um, so the software knows what ORF is where on your plate. So we're just going to go ahead and select all plates. You can select the number of replicates that you have. Uh, typically, the plates are made in, in quadruples. So like every four is the same replicate. Uh, you can select that, or you can select one. There's this linkage correction effect, um, which I can talk about more in more detail later on. And you can choose whether you want to score your results or not. Uh, so once you choose to score your results, there are different functions that you can use to score your results. Typically, I'm just going to choose the first one, which is the default. And we're going to go ahead and normalize and score. Again, takes about five, six seconds. So 
once your data has been normalized, you're directed to a page like this, where you can have a look at your data, you download your data, which is what we'll do. So if you take a look at the data, again, it's an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you get back a detailed, uh, detailed, again, you can't see it. It's row column. You have the ORFs that you, uh, that you supplemented. You have uh, a normalized colony size over here. Uh, the initial colony size is over here. You have a normalized colony size over here. And then you also have a score. Uh, which you can see over here. So from here on, you can just take these scores and analyze them, and it becomes super easy to use. Uh, another thing you can do with the web app, once you're done here, uh, you can analyze the data. So we've added a visual component to the web app so that you can kind of look at your screens and see what's going on. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and click on that. It's going to direct you to another page with your data loaded in. Uh, you can take a look at the heat map of the screen that you have. You can select different plate, uh, hover over the plate, and look at the different scores that you got back. Uh, just visually, visual inspection for the results that you have, rather than just looking at the spreadsheet. Uh, you can also scroll all the way down, and you'll have a histogram of the scores that you got back. Uh, typically, it's a normal, normally distributed histogram. Uh, you can drag along specific windows of the histogram, uh, have a look at uh, the extremes of the histogram, which is typically returned in the table. So I guess that's really all that's to the software. Um, so to conclude, uh, we developed this web application which really facilitates processing these images, which was kind of a hassle to biologists when they really performed their experiments. Uh, it gives an easy way for these biologists to process their images, normalize score within seconds, get back their data, and be able to continue doing what they wanted to do, rather than bugging us computer scientists to run the code for them and uh, wait for their data to be processed. Um, it's open source, so everything that we have written is going to be available uh, at the GitHub repository. Uh, the frameworks that I use to develop the software, uh, like I said, the front end, Twitter Bootstrap, if you haven't used this, you should totally take a look at it. Um, super cool, allows you to make really good looking web applications um, fairly easily. Uh, Play Framework, if you haven't used it, it's a web application framework that I found really easy to use. I've never really uh, handled web applications to begin with. All I knew was basic HTML. And I found that Play Framework uh, really facilitated this. If you know how to use Java, it combines Java and Scala uh, and really really makes it easy to develop these kinds of simple web applications, uh, which doesn't take long at all. I want to end my presentation with this cartoon diagram that I found online the other day. Um, how to write good code. This is typically, this pretty much summarized my whole project when I found it. Because every time we, every time I wrote code, the, the requirements changed like a month later. And they're just like, oh, we don't want this anymore. Can you change it? So I had to rewrite everything. Uh, basically stuck in this loop for a good three or four months. Leo probably knows about this. Uh, good code. Yeah. We're kind of approaching this, though, so we're almost there. Uh, where we stand right now is we're almost done. We're just uh, giving the front end a little bit of a, a change of looks. Uh, in terms of backend normalization and scoring, it's all pretty robust. Uh, it's, all, it's all almost done. So we're expecting to be done before the end of the year. Uh, acknowledgments, Leo, uh, Leopold from Boone's Lab, Matei, Anastasia, she helped me out with uh, getting started with the MATLAB stuff. 
from MATLAB code. Elena, she provided some of the um, initial data that we scored and analyzed. Michael Costanzo and Charlie Boone, of course, um, for having me at the lab. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, not at the moment, but the Excel file that you get back, if you have a look at the scores in the spreadsheet, um, the colony sizes are also there. But, and I oh, you. Oh, okay. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, we did think about that. We did think about having like the heat map side by side an image, yeah. and it's kind of when you hover over the the heat map, you would kind of sh would kind of show you the same area on the image. Um, but we kind of just left it on the side for now because we wanted to finish the important stuff. But I mean, it's it's on our list of to dos um, if we can. Any more questions? Well, I have one. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm not sure you can ask. So, when you were showing me the uh, how you did this and telling me that you use R for normalization, I mean, uh, suddenly I have a, I had a flashback to uh, spotted two color uh, microarrays. And uh, what I was wondering, also because of this idea of the circularity and me measuring densities, is if what's in the background in terms of normalization and, and you know pre-processing in R is has taken the the basics of what was done with uh, the old-fashioned uh, two-color microarrays, where you essentially have the same sort of issue. Um, if if, if well, my question is, did you? The methods that you use for pre-process and normal and normalize data were they developed from scratch or actually uh, is it the same uh, so approach? So for the normalization data, we kind of um, we kind of took Anastasia's data, which was a previously developed pipeline, but it was really it was really uh, the statistics used in it was really developed for more large-scale data. So it, it required a whole ton of data for it to be able to run, and so we kind of took that and we modified it so that. Um, we modified and we add some stuff so that it, it, the results that you get back are similar to what you would get back if it was run, if it was run through high throughput, and uh, but also meaningful if it's low throughput. So the whole point is that if you just had one screen, you want to normalize it and get scores back. That was our main goal, and so we kind of took a modified version of Anastasia's stuff and developed. So it wasn't it wasn't from scratch. No. Yeah, one question. So we'll be on the Boone. I'm on, <laughs> it's actually with Boone. <laughs> uh, it will be. So currently, we do have a we have a version of it working right now. Uh, I can give you the link, but it's still in developmental mode. So like we're still making changes every once in a while. So I mean, you could use it, but then basically, yeah. <laughs> so. Technically, it is up now, but hopefully, we're hoping by the end of the year to have like a finalized version and everything uh, pretty robust and set up. No more questions. I'm done. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>